let's take this concept and put it over here. Now, it doesn't matter what this is a chart of or what time frame these candles are. Price is not moving because we've got buyers and sellers and buyers and sellers and everybody's calmly buying and selling until this gets to zero and we have buy orders and price goes up. Now, the question is, who's buying at 20, 30, 40, or 50? And who's selling at 40, 30, 20, or 10? We are retail traders because we've been trained to buy. This is the novice space. Guys, I'm going to give you the secret to the stock market right now. Barack, Turkey, welcome. I'm going to give you to the secret to the stock market right now. You ready? Write this down. Here it is. This will make you a fortune. You ready? Here it is. Buy low, sell high. Thanks for coming. We're done. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. Well, there's nothing wrong with buy low and sell high. But just remember, I said a minute ago, every trade has a winner and a loser and a buyer and a seller. You know what that means? For every person who wants to buy low and sell high, what does somebody else have to do? Somebody else is buying high and selling low. Who's doing that? Answer A, who cares? Answer B, someone who's been trained. How about the phrase, the trend is your friend? How about waiting for confirmation of the uptrend before you get in? Well, if you're waiting for confirmation to get in, how do you buy low? And if you're waiting for confirmation to get out, how do you sell high? Now, the fact is, why did this stock stop dropping here? What was waiting for it at 10? Unfilled buy orders. So we're not going to look at all this volume in the past or all of this volume in the past. We're going to look for where do we believe the imbalance in the order flow is? Because at the end of the day, now look, in this example, we have hindsight to know that it got to 10 and then it rallied. But in real time, when this got here to 10, first of all, who's selling here at 10? There's only two reasons you sell an asset. You bought it, it went up, you're selling it for a profit. You bought it, it went down, you're selling it for a loss. That's it. So who's selling down here at 10 after the drop? Somebody who bought higher and needs to stop losing money, right? And you know why they sold it here at 10? Because they don't have any reason to think it's going to stop at 10. They think it's going to keep going. And the reality is, if there were not buy orders at 10 waiting to get filled, unfilled buy orders, when the price got to 10, it would have kept going. So if we're right, we're going to buy here with the institutional orders and then we'll profit as it moves up into fair value because other people the competition to buy is pushing price to 20 30 40 or 50. that's it and if we're wrong look i'd rather buy here and be wrong here than buy here and be wrong here now here's the other difference between institutions and retail traders retail traders care when they get filled Professionals care at what price they get filled at. If you're buying 100 shares and it hits your limit price, boom, your whole order gets filled in, in a nanosecond and you're done. There's no unfilled shares. You got your whole order. You bought the whole 100, 200 shares, whatever. But if you're Goldman, Morgan, Merrill, and you're buying shares, are you buying 100 or are you buying a million? You can't place one order to buy a million shares. It'll never get filled. So institutions place dozens or hundreds of orders at certain price points to buy low and sell high. I'll give you an example. 10, 12 years ago, 2011, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. Mr. Buffett decided he wanted to buy shares of IBM. Why did he want to buy IBM? I don't have a clue. I called his office. He wouldn't take my call. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I don't, who cares? But eventually, Buffett bought enough shares of IBM that he owned 5% of the company. He owned 5% of the shares. And he said, and this is in the journal, you can Google it. He, he ended up owning 5% of IBM shares and it took eight months to, to buy 5% of the shares. Why did it take so long? He could have bought 5% of the shares in a week or two. He could have just started chasing price, chasing price, chasing price like we do. Instead, it took him eight months to get filled. He didn't care when he walked away with 5%. He cared at what price he paid. Does that make sense? And when it came time to sell 5% of IBM shares, you think he sold them in one order, in one sell order? Or did it take him a little while to unload 5% of the company's shares? Let that sink in for a second. It's the institutions. Now, you could be an institution. You want to buy a million shares of stock? Bingo, you're an institution. But that's not most of us. Most of us are buying one, two, five, ten 10 futures contracts, 100 shares, 200 shares. Even if you're buying 1,000 shares, 
Who cares? A thousand shares doesn't create an imbalance in the marketplace. This is what we're going to look for. Price will stop dropping at a demand zone when you have demand to buy and no sellers and the competition to buy pushes price up. Price will stop going up at supply when the competition to sell when you have sellers and zero buyers. And that imbalance pushes price back into the novice space. And the definition of the novice space is where is the largest volume of trading and where do you have a lot of wide and whippy trading? Anybody ever get stopped out right away? Feel like the, uh, the, the, uh, the waves are just crashing you around? That's because we're trading here in the middle, in the novice space. There doesn't have to be a lot of volume here. There just has to be an imbalance. So we know that most traders lose money. Look, Google says it's 90%. Who cares? 90, 80, it's, it's, the number's too high. Brokerage firms know that most day traders quit within a couple of years. Look at the number one strategy on, on the internet, trend following. And guys, I get it. Psychologically, it makes sense. Trend follow. You buy a stock, what do you want a stock to do when you buy it? Go up. So if you buy a stock that's already going up, it's already in an uptrend, gee, it's got to be easier to make a profit, right? Well, then why don't all the trend traders make all the money? And by the way, if buy low, sell high is the secret to success and you buy something that's already going up, how do you buy it low? Because in order to buy it low, it was trending down. So we're going to take you out of the novice space because this is the novice space. People who buy after the rallies, people who sell after the drops, because we've been taught technical analysis and news. We've been taught what we feel. We've been taught to use lagging indicators to trade the future movement. That makes no sense. We're gonna take these clues and these footprints and get you out of the novice space and take you into the professional space. So let's talk about this. By the way, this is one strategy, pinnacle method of supply and demand, one market, all purposes, stocks, ETFs, futures, options, crypto, day swing, buy and hold investing, doesn't matter. I don't care if you're trading Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin will only go up if somebody wants to buy it and nobody's selling it at a certain price. And just think about yourself. You walk into a car dealer and the sticker price on the car is 31 grand. Are you going to offer the dealer 33? No. As long as there's a buyer and a seller at a certain price, nobody's going to raise or lower their price. That's it. Done. Feel free to disagree with me. Done. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So let's talk about this. What we've been trained, you know, when I started my trading journey 20 years ago, I still have a library of books on technical analysis. How many of you have studied technical analysis, uh, chart patterns, cup and handle, um, head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, wedges, ascending triangles, blah, 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 oscillators, MACD, stochastics, RSI, CCI, all this stuff. Structure. Took me a month to memorize a lot of the structure patterns. But look at this. In here, look at all this. Look at all these candles. This is fair value. Who's buying after rallies and selling after drops and buying after rallies and selling after drops? And what about the technical analysis that we learned? Look over here. Here's a drop base drop and a drop base drop, and we blow right up through that. Here's resistance, we blew through that. Here's a drop base drop, a drop base drop, we blow up through that. It's not just enough to know structure. You need to know location. In here, this is where all the volume is but it's past volume, it's closed volume. We can't do anything with it. Those orders are no longer there. We're looking for unfilled orders because as price is dropping, it's gonna eventually get to a level where the competition to buy, the imbalance is big enough that there will be enough buyers to absorb all the sellers and the competition to buy fair value will act as a magnet. The competition to buy will push price up and the opposite in reverse. As prices rallying, 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 you got to get in, you got to get in, you got to get in. The only reason you can keep buying an uptrend is because somebody wants to sell up here. And if there are enough sell orders to absorb all the buyers, the competition to sell pushes price. And if you're a trend trader, you are trained to buy in the novice space. Wait for confirmation. Wait for the moving average to cross. Wait for the MACD to cross the stochastics. We buy after the rally and we sell after the drop. Guys, it's like real estate. If you're a real estate investor hoping to flip a property for a profit, you don't just want a good house. You don't just want a good structure. You want it to be in the right location, in the right neighborhood. It's easy to find a decent house, some decent bones in a crummy neighborhood. 
you want a good house in a good location. There's a lot of legitimate structure in here, but it's in the wrong location where you have small imbalances, not large imbalances. Does that make sense? Just like sell, just like the housing market 15 years ago, people complained they couldn't sell their house. Well, sure they could. If they lowered the price, nobody was just offering to buy it. So you have structure in here. I memorized structure. I memorized all the patterns and it didn't work in the marketplace because I was never taught imbalance. I was never taught where are the unfilled orders. I was looking for breakouts on big volume, not reversals on big imbalances. So let's look at some charts, shall we? Now, every one of these slides that I show you a, a, um, a, a couple of charts, this is from our forum, okay? Um, I invited you to join us in our Pinnacle Forum. You'll have an opportunity to do that at the end of the webinar. The picture on the left was a live screenshot from the forum on a particular morning, okay? Um, wow, we've got a lot of folks from Turkey today. Excellent, okay? So this was a live screenshot from the SPY um, on March 29th when the SPY was trading at 414. The picture on the right is what happened with that asset in the future. So here we were with the SPY at 414, a demand zone down here at 402 to 404. Well, look what happened. Uh, a little while later when the SPY came down to this pre-identified area. One candle, two candles, three candles, four candles. Remember what candles represent, guys? Closed trades. Every trade has a buyer and a seller. So the question you have to ask yourself, after the SPY has dropped 10 points, who keeps selling after the drop? And why can they sell? Who keeps selling after the drop and who keeps buying? after the drop. I mean, look at this. From April 20th to May 1st, for 11 days, the SPY was trending down. Well, the way you buy low and sell high is you buy low after something drops. This was a demand area. Now, why did it stop dropping here? Answer A, who cares? Answer B, what was waiting for the SPY at 404? Buy orders. Now, I know that in hindsight, I can prove, this is a real chart, you can pull this up on your own, of the SPY from a month or so ago. I mean, look at this. If, by the way, if there were not buy orders here, this would have kept going. Now, who's selling down here? Someone who doesn't believe that it's gonna stop here, because by the way, Sam will explain on day one of Elevate. Here's the structure, okay? Here's the rally base rally that created this demand area. Sam will start to go through a checklist of structure identification on day one, the morning of day one in your Elevate week, your first lesson, okay? Look at this, comes down. Now, if you bought it here at 404, could it have kept going down? We're not right 100% of the time. And sometimes, by the way, order flow changes. News, announcements, think people will change their mind. Zones don't hold forever. But if you bought something here at 404 and you were wrong and you got stopped out at 401 down here, what'd you lose? Three points. What's your potential profit target? 10 points. If you bought it at 404 and the top of fair value is 414 and the, the opposing supply zone is up at 420, 422. So if you bought it at 404 and you just took the trade to fair value, you risked three to make 10. And if you stayed in till supply, you risked three to make 16. And that's actually something else Sam's going to talk about on day one. We call this reward to risk. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now, if I may. The secret to your success as a trader or an investor is not what you make when you're right. I know the winning trades are sexy. It's not what you make when you're right. It's what you don't lose when you're wrong. And you will have losing trades. I can guarantee it. I don't know what your winning percentage will be. Nobody cares about your winning percentage if you're in the red. Nobody cares about your batting average, right? What do you care about as a trader or an investor? P&L, that's it. What if you had nine losing trades and one winning trade? Uh-oh, gee, I, I may stink at this. Well, you could still be profitable with the right reward to risk. So a, Sam will start you out with a three to one reward to risk on the pinnacle checklist. What is a three to one reward to risk? Every trade you're wrong, you only lose a buck. Every trade you're right, you make three. Think about that. You know, when I started my trading journey 20 years ago, I thought you had to be right all the time. 
that have nothing but winning trades to make money. Well, if you have a three to one reward to risk, you not only don't have to be right all the time, you don't even have to be right 50% of the time. Think about it. You made three trades, two losers, one winner. You lost one, you lost one, you have $2 in losses, one $3 winner. You lost 65% of your trades, but you are profitable. Wow. Does that make sense, everybody? And the way you have a three to one or four to one or five to one or 10 to one reward to risk is you get in as close to where you know you're wrong as possible. We're not suggesting you get in here just to be contrarian because everybody else is getting out. Sam identified in advance, this structure was the clue of where the imbalance is in the order flow. Now that I've set that up, let's look at a few more. This is the NASDAQ futures. For a week, it traded within 200 points. Here was the rally, base rally. The, the NASDAQ was here at around 12.8. The demand zone was down here at around 12.650. This was a live screenshot. The price was here. The demand area was here. What does a demand area represent? Unfilled buy orders. What we believe is unfilled buy orders. Well, sure enough, uh, a few days later, the NASDAQ futures dropped into, sorry, the next day, this was March 29th, right here. The next morning, the NASDAQ futures dropped into the zone. A few candles, a few candles, a few candles, and a strong rally into and through fair value. Now, again, who's selling down here? Answer A, who cares? That's Randall, that's day one of Elevate, the first lesson with Sam, he will start to go into, look, I can only be at the, today I've only got you for an hour, a little over an hour. Um, going to be at the 5,000 foot view today. Sam, on day one, he's going to start going into a checklist on structure in the right location and how to start identifying zones, reward to risk, all of that. But here's the thing, who's selling down here? Who's selling down here after a 250, 300 point drop? Well, that's who's selling down here. Somebody who bought up here after the rally. Think about that. Who keeps buying up here? Buying after the rally, buying after the rally, buying after the rally, buying after the rally, buying after the rally. Sound like a broken record, don't I? Who keeps selling after the drops? And the only reason someone sold down here is because they bought higher. And by the way, you know why someone sold right here? Let's get into technical analysis, shall we? Supply and demand order flow imbalance is not support and resistance because you know what every book on technical analysis is going to show you right here here's your support line somebody sold here because they believed it was dropping another 170 points now what if we're wrong or the zone doesn't hold because zones don't hold forever otherwise markets would never move if you bought something right here and you got stopped out here what are you risking 40 or 50 points your profit target just to the top of fair value was a 300 point gain on the NASDAQ futures. You risked 50 points to make 300. That's a six to one reward to risk. You just can't be afraid to take the small losses. You know, guys, in the US, if uh, you follow US football, a field goal is three points. Touchdown is seven points. Well, you need points. You, how do you win a football game? Is it how many times you score or is it how many points you score? What if the other team scores four times? You couldn't stop them from scoring, but you only gave up four field goals. You only gave up 12 points. How many times do you have to score if they're touchdowns? You only have to score twice. They outscored you four to two. You outpointed them 14 to 12. You win the game. It doesn't matter how many times they scored. It matters how many points they scored. So when you're wrong, give up field goals. When you're right, score touchdowns. I call this Stevie's field goal approach to risk management. Pretty darn simple, isn't it? But the only way you can do that is if you get in as close to where you know you're wrong as possible. And why is someone, as the NASDAQ futures are dropping 300 points, but maybe below a support line here, why are we preparing to get in here? Not to be contrarian, not because we have a crystal ball, but because this clue and these footprints leads us to believe that that's where there are orders waiting to get filled. And guys, you just can't be afraid to take trades. You can't be afraid to take small losses. And if you learn it right, when you take a loss, it will be a smaller loss. Even if, look, unless you're day trading, there's gap risk every day. 
So any day, a, something could gap against you. I'll give you that. But if this thing gapped from here to here, I'd still rather get in here and get gapped out here than get in up here and get gapped out down there. Does that make sense? You just can't be afraid. You have to learn to take little losses. Because I'll tell you right now, if you don't take little losses, you know what little losses grow up to be? <laughs> Many times they grow up to be big losses. And sometimes it happens in a hurry. All right, how about this? Now, this is what I, I love this slide for two reasons. First of all, this is the tech sector ETF of the S&P 500. It's not a penny stock, XLK. It spent almost a month trading within four points. Look at all this fair value. Look at all, look at all the structure in here. I'm going to show you real technical analysis in here that failed every time because the structure here was not the structure here. So here was a rally base rally traded within four points for three and a half weeks on November 29th. Next morning, the XLK tanks in one candle into the demand area, spends the whole day there, and then a strong rally back through fair value. Now, two things I want you to notice here. Look at how many candles are here. These are 30 minute candles. What are there, 15 candles there? How, how many, look at all the panic selling down there at 129. Who keeps selling? Because a candle represents a closed trade. You know why somebody's selling down here? Yes, you do. This is nothing. Here's the gap, or it's gonna fill the gap. How many of you have heard about, you know, gaps get filled X percentage of times. So you know why somebody sold here? Because this isn't where they thought it was going to stop. They thought it was at least coming to here, or if not, another 10 points down to 120 and fill the gap. But guys, look at all the pet for, for a day, 15 candles. How many buy orders were down here? A ton. Notice, I don't have a volume indicator. I don't care what the volume is. There were just people saying, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy. You want to sell? I'll buy. You want to sell? I'll buy. You want to get out? I'll buy. You want to sell? I'll buy. And by the way, look at this. It took a week to drop into the demand area. And then it took five candles to move swiftly through fair value. Okay? It's not a bear trap, Shane. This is what, this is what, it's all about order flow. Bear trap is, I, I, I'll show you a bear trap in a few minutes. I'll show you something that traditional technical analysis, because remember, bear traps and all the traditional technical analysis is based on what? Lagging indicators. Guys, people are buying up here. Look over here. Traditional technical analysis, right? Look over here. Here's a rally base drop, a rally base drop. Here's your resistance line, a gap up, a breakout above resistance. Boom, failed. How about over here? Drop base rally, drop base rally, support line. I'm in, baby. Boom, it failed. There's a lot of structure in here, but it's in the wrong location. And it's the wrong location because the imbalances are small, not large. Remember, the definition of fair value in the novice space is a lot of volume and a lot of wide and whippy trading. I don't know what the volume is down here. What I know is if we're right, the imbalance is significant. And you know why? A answer me, that, riddle me this, Batman. Why did it take only five candles? What's missing from this novice space, from this fair value? What's missing here to allow the XLK to rally back up in five candles? Not just sellers, but yes, you're right, Shane, but not just sellers, what's missing are unfilled orders. What's missing are the orders. These orders aren't there anymore. They've been filled. That's why we don't pay attention to volume. These orders have been filled. So you're right. There are no sell. You're right, Shane. There are no sell orders there because they've been filled. It was easy to move through. The competition to buy is pushing price up because a lot of these sell orders have been gone. And remember, if we're wrong down here, what are we risking? A point and a half? We got in here, we get stopped out down here. What are we risking? A point and a quarter, a point and a half to make five or six. There's your four to one reward to risk. Now, how many of you have been taught volume? Breakouts on big volume. We want big volume, big volume, big volume. You know what big volume is? Big volume is yesterday. The reason price moved through here is all this volume is done. 
These trades have been filled. Those orders are not there anymore. I'm not looking for big volume. I'm looking for future volume. I'm looking for potential volume. And I don't care how much it is. If there are enough, Sam had enough buy orders in his hands to absorb all the sellers. If the imbalance is big enough, guys, say what you want. We can disagree about politics, sports, um, whether the earth is flat or round. I don't care about that. Good people can make arguments on the different sides of every issue. But I'm telling you right here, if there were not buy orders right here, what would price have done? It would have kept dropping. So for all the oscillators and all the indicators that you can put on a chart, MACDs and stochastics and RSI and CCI and Fibonacci and Bollinger Bands and blah, 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 blah. You know what I want on my chart? I want a future volume indicator. <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. No brokerage firm can give you that. No book on technical analysis written five or 10 years ago can show you a future volume indicator. But you are going to learn what Sam had in his hands. You're going to learn that if you can identify the clues of where the imbalances are, because Sam had the access to the order flow, but when he left the exchange, he no longer had access to the order flow, but he still had the clues. He knew whether you had the orders or not. If it stopped dropping here, there had to be buy orders. Had to be. So if you got in here, small loss. So in here, there's a lot of legitimate structure, and that's where the volume is. How many of you have ever gotten into a trade, got stopped out right away? Or you got stopped out, and as soon as you got stopped out, it went back in the direction you thought it was going to go. Sliver of an imbalance. That's the novice space. That's wide and whippy trading. That's a lot of volume. Okay? Now, let's look at a couple more. NASDAQ futures. Okay, within 200 points. Look at this. There's your demand area. Supports down here, another 170 points. It comes in. Now, Sam will talk about the importance of something like this. When you get a candle, inching out of fair value, but not quite getting to the demand zone. Now, remember, there is no guarantee. If every demand and supply zone worked forever, then markets would just bing around like a pinball machine and trade sideways forever. Markets don't do that. Eventually, orders get filled. Eventually, Warren bought all the shares of IBM he wanted to buy and sold all the shares he wanted to sell. And eventually, those orders aren't there. That's going to be part of the checklist. You may even see the right structure, but maybe it's not fresh. You may see the right demand zone, but maybe it's been tested too many times. Because the more times it gets tested, what happens? Orders are getting filled, and eventually, those orders will go away. Warren didn't buy 10 or 20% of IBM. Okay? So... Let's look at another one. Look at this. For three weeks, the diamonds were trading within what? Four points? Three points. Look at this. Here was the live screenshot with the diamonds at 335. Demand was down here at 332. Little rally base, gap rally out of that. We almost, there was one of those clues. We almost got to this. And here we were a few days later. The diamonds come down to the demand zone. These are 15-minute candles. Look at this, guys. I call this a one-candle reversal. Think about this for a second. The diamonds are dropping 3%. Just dropping, 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 dropping. Boom. Gets right to this area. One-candle reversal. And look at the speed with which it moves through fair value back up to here. Now, if you got in down here, again, what are you risking? A point to make five, six, seven, or eight, depending on, this could have been a, sh a, day, a short day trade, risking a dollar to make five. There you go. If you could afford a $338 stock, great. Okay, and, and it, you could have done 50 shares or 20 shares, wh whatever. The point is, here was the imbalance. This area was identified in advance. One candle reversal. The clues were correct. That's where the imbalance was. How about this? Also on the cues. Look at this. 316. Here it's trading at 316. This demand is down here between 309 and 311. Okay. A couple of weeks later, the, look at all this. Look at here's the definite fair value. But a boom, but a bing, but a boom, but a bing. Well, look at this. Resistance, resistance. Re here's the bear trap, Shane. It just broke resistance. Boom. Someone's buying up here. Ouch. 
or here's the bull trap. Look at that. Support, 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 support. Someone's buying right here. You wonder who's selling right here? Because nobody thinks it's stopping here. It's going further and further and further. What are you risking? Two points to make 12. Six to one reward to risk. Now, look, at the end of the day, every time price moves a penny, there had to be a sliver of an imbalance. Had to be. Because remember, if there's no imbalance, price doesn't move. Just like when the markets are closed, price doesn't move because there's no trading. Price doesn't move when you have no trading or price doesn't move when you have buy and sell orders at the same price. But fair value, wide and whippy, is a sliver of an imbalance. This is fair value. We're looking for this because if this is big enough to absorb this, competition to sell pushes price down. If this is bigger than big enough to absorb this, competition to buy pushes price up. Let's look at another one. There's a Forex chart. I told you we look, Sam and Jasmine, look at all the assets, all the time frames. Here's the Euro dollar, all right? One candle shoots up, breaks out of fair value right up to this right here, this drop base drop. Sam will talk about the structure. How did it enter a zone? How did it exit the zone? How much time did it spend there? What are the wicks like? He's going to go through a checklist with you, okay? And then rallied right into supply, three candles, and immediately back to fair value. Somebody bought after the rally, and somebody keeps selling after the drops. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the webinar, you're going to learn to trade what's real not what you feel. With all due respect, boys and girls, I don't care what you think and I don't care what you feel. And you shouldn't care what I think and you shouldn't care what I feel. My opinion is no better than yours. If I could predict what the market would do, would I be here talking to you? But we're going to trade what's real, not what you feel. How many times do you hear good news and the stock tanks or what you hear is bad news, what you think is bad news and it rallies? Doesn't matter what we feel. It matters what's real, and what's real is where the imbalance is. So take a look. Um, consumer price index number, the CPI number came out one morning, okay? So here we were. Sam was in the forum here on this particular day. The ES futures gapped up to here and traded for a day or so, day and a half, around 45.80. Somebody bought the rally up here. So this was a live screenshot at 45.80. Here was the demand zone. The CPI numbers, consumer price index numbers came out in the morning. Apparently they were bad numbers or people felt they were bad numbers. So let's say you're long an ES future here and the CPI numbers come out and you think they're bad. And you're sitting there going, uh-oh, I got to sell. Bad news, I'm bullish, I got to sell. Well, I can't sell, the market's closed. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to be at my computer when the market opens and as soon as the market opens, I'm going to have an order to sell at the open. Okay. Or by the way, even if you had a stop loss right here at 45.60, you got stopped out at the open. Either way. Well, it gapped down on quote unquote bad news. It opened. Look at this candle. It opened in the buy zone. And within an hour, all the way back up 60 points. Now, even if we were wrong and we got, we got in here and the news really was bad and we got stopped out down here, what did we risk? 15, 17 points? 20 points to make 60. Three, three and a half to one reward to risk. How many of you have ever gotten stopped out? And as soon as you got stopped out, it went back in the other direction. So you know what people do? Oh, man, I got, oh, good, I'm out at the open. An hour later, it's all the way back. People sit there and go, well, that's it. I'm not using stop losses anymore. Yeah, good luck with that. It's like un un unhooking your airbag or your seatbelt. Okay, your problem was not the the stop loss. Your problem was not the structure. Your problem was the structure in the wrong location. Nothing wrong with stop losses. You need stop losses. We're not right all the time because if we got in here and we were wrong, our stop would be down here, not all the way down here. If it breaks this, we're entering a bullish trade. When do you not want to be in a bullish trade? How simple do we keep it here at Pinnacle? Listen to this. When do you not want to be in a bullish trade? Answer, when you is no longer bullish. How simple is that? And you know when you're no longer bullish? When it breaks the distal line of a demand zone, because that means the buy orders are gone. That's it. Doesn't matter what you think. Doesn't matter what you feel. The buy orders are gone. It's going lower. Done. So if you get in here and you're wrong, you want to get out here. People are buying after the rallies, selling after the drops. 
how about this? One morning, the Fed came out with, um, you know, interest rate information and everybody thought it was good news. Now look over here on the left, the Qs. On the morning of December 12th, right here, the Qs were trading at 282. Okay, they closed that day at 285 over here. But here was the fair value for a month, trading within what? Seven, eight, nine points for a month, demand and supply. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now with all due respect, this little sliver of a structure here, this drop base drop, not the gap, not the gaps, this drop base drop was the supply zone, okay? and how this demand zone, which has already been tested twice and worked twice, who sold after the drops, but watch. The queues closed here at 285. The next morning, they gapped up to 297 because the Fed came out with some inflation number, I mean, some interest rate numbers that apparently they were gonna slow down the interest rate increases, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, all you traditional technical analysis people, which I used to be, look over here. Here's your resistance line. You know. If you give a magic marker to a five-year-old and say, hey, let's play connect the dots. Here's your resistance line. Resistance, resistance, resistance. The Qs are gonna gap up from 285 to 297 on a breakout above resistance. You wake up in the morning, you hear good um, Fed news. The Qs, the, the NASDAQ futures are up big and you're sitting there saying, I'm in baby. I'm gonna buy the Qs on a breakout above resistance. Now these two red lines are on nobody's chart. You may have a resistance line here, but you're not gonna have this supply zone, which is represented by what? An order flow imbalance. So some retail trader thought he was buying a break out above resistance when what he bought was a break into the supply zone. And within a week, five days, they were down almost 10%, 28 points. Who's buying after the rallies? Who's buying the good news? Remember, what you felt was good news, and maybe it really was good news. But what was real was the reason you were able to buy up here is because people were waiting to finish selling up here. And the reason we were able to buy down here is because people, remember, candles are where the money is. When you see the right structure, money to buy, money to buy, money to buy. How about this? This is from the uh, trading exchange, which you'll get Sam and uh, his team for five mornings in the forum. You'll get to spend two trading sessions with Nick live trading in the open exchange. Look at this. Here was his demand zone on the NASDAQ futures, the NQ. Okay. And over the course of the next 10 days, but a boom, but a boom, but a boom, but a boom. So the question that you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, who keeps selling down here? And who keeps buying up here? Look at this, for 10 days. Who keeps selling after the drop, buying after the rally, selling after the drop, buying after the rally, selling after the drop, buying after the rally? Oh, it's getting boring, isn't it? Who keeps, and who's buying down here? Say what you want about anything. I'm from New York. You can tell me you don't like my looks, my sense of humor. You don't like the Yankees. I've heard it all before. But there were buy orders down here until there aren't. But somebody, Keep selling here and buying after the rally. Now, we take this fair value definition, and this is it right here. Demand is down here. Out, demand and supply are outside of fair value. So the question of how do you identify a demand zone actually starts, Sam's going to start with fair value and then look for the demand area. And sure enough, we're up here at supply at around 380. Demand is down here at around 350. And the uh, Goldman Sachs was trading right here, which would have been right here, this candle, right here. We end up dropping 15 points into the demand area. Here's your support line. Somebody had a buy right here. And by the way, I understand buy low, sell high. It's going lower, it's going lower. Somebody's buying lower, buying lower, buying low. You don't just wanna buy low and sell high. You wanna buy low where you think it's gonna stop going low. So you're getting in right before it starts going back up and the opposite. And here was another one candle reversal in the supply area. Who's Look at this. Somebody watched Goldman Sachs go up 10%, 30 points, one candle reversal because they thought it was coming up here and going up 10, 12 more points. So you wonder who's selling low and buying high.
I mentioned before, when do you not want to be in a bullish trade when you is no longer bullish? Keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. It is about structure and location. It is not about lagging technical analysis, magic lagging oscillators. It is not about Kramer throwing a chair at the screen on good news, going booyah. It is structure and location and order flow imbalance. And it's about probabilities. You will have losing trades. But it's, remember, it's what you don't lose when you're wrong. And I mentioned earlier, if a level has been retested too many times, this is part of the checklist. Sam will go through this. Overnight levels, intraday levels, retested levels, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now, the two questions that you're going to learn to ask yourself are this. I get it. You want to buy low, sell high. Where will price turn? Because you want something to go up as soon as you buy it. So basically... That's why people are trend traders, because if you want something to go up as soon as you buy it, you buy something that's already going up, but then how do you buy low? Well, if you can identify the buy-sell imbalance, you can buy where a downtrend is going to stop dropping or where you believe it's going to stop dropping. Where will price turn? And that's it. There are, more buy there are enough buy orders to absorb the sellers, done. Stops dropping. More sell orders to absorb all the buy orders, done. Stops going up. That's it. And that imbalance has to be significant, which is why I want to know what Goldman, Morgan, Merrill, Buffett's orders are and not Shane's, Randall's, or Ronnie's, <laughs> nothing, or mine even, no disrespect. But it's not just enough to buy low and sell high. I mean, to, you don't just buy low and sell low. You need to buy low and sell high. So where will price move to? Into or through the novice space, if we're right, on its way to an opposing zone. And the reason it's able to move into and through the novice space is because, as I mentioned earlier, that's where the filled orders are. And if they're filled, they're no longer there. And I showed you one thing on the XLK where it took five candles to move, all the, took a week to drop to demand, took five candles to get back through the novice space because those orders were filled and they are no longer there. So, let me ask you a question. Why are most traders not profitable? Any thoughts? We've kind of been talking about this for the last hour. I got you for a little while longer. This is gonna be an important piece coming up right here. Why do you think most traders are not profitable? Uh, reward to risk, get in too late, buy after the rally, sell after the drop, they're chasing trends, uh, they're trading emotionally, fear and greed, um, panic selling, panic greedy buying. I mean, think about it. The brokerage firms know that most people quit trading, how many accounts get blown up, how many accounts get closed, how many accounts get charged in inactivity fee because people stop trading. Well, let's take a look at what most of us have been taught at one point or another on successful trading strategies. Now, I'm going to call these novice strategies. But when I learned these 20 years ago, they were not taught to me as novice strategies. These were what I was taught was going to reduce my risk, increase my reward, and increase my probability of making a profit. We're going to take these strategies and put them through the supply and demand, the pinnacle supply and demand filter. So let's start with trend, shall we? We've been making fun of trend for an hour. What's an uptrend? Higher highs, higher lows. What's a downtrend? Lower highs, lower lows. If you were taught to wait for confirmation of the trend, how the heck do you buy low? We've been trained to feel comfortable. Boy, everybody's getting in. Everybody's getting in. The competition to buy. I got to get in. 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 Thank God I just got in. Oh, boy. Why did I get in? Why did I get in? Buy and hold becomes buy and hope. Buy and hope becomes buy and pray. Buy and pray becomes how the heck do I get out? I'm a panicked seller. You want to know who's selling down here at demand? Panicked sellers. But just remember this. Before you can be a panicked seller, do you know what you are? Just panicked. You can only be a panicked seller when somebody else is calmly buying. Because here's the thing. Trend traders don't sell at supply. They buy at supply. They don't buy at demand. They sell at demand. Let that sink in for a second. How about news? You know, there's two things with news. There's the, is it really good news or bad news? But remember, what we feel, who cares what's real, okay? But even if the news, because first of all, you may think news is good. I mean, last month, a couple of months ago, uh, a company, CRM, announced earnings. They beat the Wall Street estimate by 100 and something percent, and the stock was down 10 percent in a week. Stock gapped up on good news and then tanked 10 percent. But even if the news really is good, 
What do you want to do on good news as a retail trader? You want to buy the news, buy the good news, buy the good news. Well, by the time the last good news buyer buys, who's waiting to sell up here? And if the news really is bad, by the time all the panicked sellers are selling, now think about it, guys. You're Warren Buffett buying IBM for eight months, or you're just somebody trying to get into a position. If you have an order to buy something down here, do you care if it takes a month for the candles to get down to where your buying is because you're patient enough to wait? Do you care if it takes a month to get to demand or if it gaps down on one candle at demand? Your orders are sitting there. And remember, even if the news really is bad, I'd rather buy here and get stopped out here than buy up here after the trend or buy the good news. Most people buy after the confirmation. That's right, Dominic. That's exactly what we're talking about. So trend is confirmation. News is confirmation. How about the indicators? I still have all the books I learned on technical analysis, okay? Uh, MACD, Stochastics, RSI, CSI. How about the, not C CSI, it's a TV show, CCI. How about the moving average crossover? Who's heard of that one? When the short-term moving average crosses the long-term moving average, there's your buy indicator. Your buy indicator is not down here at demand. It's when these lagging indicators, so we've been, this is where the moving average cross tells you to buy, up here. Demand is down here. The imbalance was down here. Look at all the profits you gave up by buying after the rally. And how about, um, and all of those indicators, you can put so many indicators on your chart. Every brokerage firm you open gives you access to over 100 indicators. You can put so many indicators on your chart, you can't even see the candlesticks anymore. I did that once. It was pretty funny, okay? And technical analysis. Every book teaches the same patterns. Here's a double bottom. You're not buying down here at demand when the double bottom, bottom breaks the neckline. That's where you're buying after the rally. Double top, double bottom, head and shoulders, cup and handle, wedge pattern, descending triangles, blah, blah, blah. So as Dominic says, every one of these was taught to me as higher probability, higher reward, less risk. And yet every one of these, when you're waiting for confirmation, you're waiting for confirmation on lagging indicators. Guys, look, all of these indicators and oscillators are based on the past. If you're driving your car and you're driving forward, do you want to be looking out the rearview mirror or do you want to be looking through the front windshield? Who cares what you drove past five minutes ago? You're past it. You want to see what's in front of you. But what if I block the front windshield and the only thing you can do while you're driving is looking in the rearview mirror? Yeah, you may get where you're going for a little while, but eventually you're going to crack up your car because you can't see what's in front of you. If you're trading based on lagging indicators, not one of these is attempting to show you where the unfilled orders are in the future. I call this trading in the rearview mirror. Good luck with that. And that's why they're novice strategies. How can a book on technical analysis written five years ago show you the order flow imbalance Monday morning or tomorrow or this afternoon in the markets? Guys, buy low, sell high, buy wholesale, sell retail. How you make money buying and selling in the markets is how you do it in everything in life. You know, today, we're the UN today. We've got Turkey, Australia, Canada, Ireland. We got, we got, we got pinnacle members from all over the world. And of course, the US, North America. I don't care what country you're in, what time zone you're in, what currency you trade. We all speak the same language of profit and loss and supply and demand, order flow and balance works on every asset, every time frame, regardless of where you are. So here's your core Pinnacle team. We all adhere to the Pinnacle method of supply and demand and balance. There's Sam on the left. You will have Sam for a week in your Elevate experience. Now, you, I welcome you here to our introductory advanced workshop. You're going to have an opportunity to fill out an application and enroll and elevate in just a couple of moments. And the application is very simple, but it's very important. We want to know what are, what are you looking to do? What are you here for? Do you want to create income, protect income, build or grow a retirement account, protect your retirement account, generate daily cash flow? It doesn't matter. The pinnacle template is pliable enough to fit around you. We don't force you into some template. If you're a, an 80 year old retired person with a seven figure retirement account, you may not even want to trade. But if you're a 25, 30 year old guy with 10 grand, you may just want to look for day trading futures to generate uh, 50, 100 bucks a day, whatever your goal might be. 
okay? So it's pliable enough. We want to know what you're looking to do, what your experience is, and why you're here. You'll fill out the application. You'll tell us your strengths, your weaknesses, your goals, etc. And then you will talk with a membership specialist to review your application, create your specific plan of what you are looking to accomplish. You'll schedule your Elevate date. And remember, Elevate is simple. And in this case, you know, Sam doesn't teach a lot of the elevates or all of them, but you're going to get Sam, who was the clerk on the floor of the exchange, who put it all together live when he was the clerk and then took those clues and those order flow and balances out into the real world when he left the floor of the exchange. Three live lessons with Sam and other Pinnacle uh, members in the, uh, the Pinnacle community. Um, um, and then five mornings in the Pinnacle for, in the, in the forum with Sam and his team. They are not going to sit there and make predictions of what they think is going to happen. They are going to take the clues that I shared with you, the structures, and look for the locations of where the most opportune, high probability entries and exits are based on assets and time frames. And then Nick will be in the open exchange trading sessions live for two days. Everything in your Elevate Week will be recorded and you can join us live and go back and uh, watch it over and over and over again. And like today, you can ask questions if you're watching it live. We always start on a Sunday. Pinnacle Method Foundation with Sam. Structure, location, reward to risk. Um, um, a risk management, um, when to take profit, when to take loss, how much, et cetera, et cetera, based on your, you know, looking for a minimum three to one reward to risk. Uh, Tuesday, lesson two, he's going to start getting into advanced probability enhancers. You may see the right structure and what looks like the right location and still have rules to not take a trade. Maybe the reward to risk isn't there for what you want. So he's going to help you with that. Um, every, we put everything together on lesson three as we look at the, um, the Pinnacle Forum sessions from that week. Okay, final Q&A and your membership specialist will make sure you know what time it is wherever you are. Here's what it looks like in the forum. 8.15 to 9 Eastern, which is before the U.S. equities markets open. This was a live screenshot from one of the forums. Look at this. The Russell futures were trading within... 200, 250 points for three months. And yet look at the demand area where the imbalance was below all of this fair value. They walk you through their pre-market analysis on all assets, all time frames to look for the imbalances and you get to chat with them live. Here's Nick in the trading exchange. I showed you one of his um, slides earlier, Tuesday and Thursday at 9.15. The market, um, uh, the market will be open. He is going to take the pinnacle method rules and look for more short-term day and swing trading opportunities, okay? Usually with futures and Forex, and you'll get to chat live with Nick and the forum. I'm just gonna run through just a couple of more quick slides here, and then you'll have an opportunity to fill out the application and join us. Notice what we were able to accomplish last year. Caught the low on the SPY. Here we were at 360 on the SPY. Demand zone was already down here from months earlier. One candle reversal. And by June, a 20% rally on the SPY off the low of 22. The S&P, the ES futures, same thing, caught the demand zone in October, 20% rally into June. The Dow futures, all the way up here at almost 30,000, ended up dropping down to uh, under 29,000, okay? And the rally, look at this, over the course of a month or so, right down, caught the low at the demand area. Somebody was selling right here, and then a month later, all the way back up, a 15% rally back up. So at the end of the day, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about structure. Anybody can teach you structure. I'll pull out one of my books on technical analysis written in the early 2000s. There's structure in there. There's a lot of structure. There is not location in there. At the end of the day, location wins out. If you get the location right, that's how you lose less when you're wrong and you make more when you're right. That's it. Okay. And as Dominic said, most people buy after the confirmation. We are trained to trade in fair value. That's why the volume's there, because that's where we've been trained to place our orders and to chase price. Okay. I want to thank you for giving me a little over an hour of your time. Um, uh, the link to the um, application will be put in the chat box uh, right there. Um, if you uh, type in the coupon code in the application, the word strategy, all in 